Hello and welcome back to the Pain Free for Life podcast. I'm Dr. Rob Van Bergen and today I'm joined by Dr. Ryan Wolfert. Dr. Ryan is a certified mindset specialist, certified chiropractic sports physician, and certified chiropractic biophysics physician using a specific spinal rehab and postural correction protocol to help patients resolve chronic pain and prevent disease and organ dysfunction. With 23 years of education and clinical experience, Dr. Ryan has helped thousands correct their spine, upgrade their energy and longevity, eliminate dependence on medications, and make simple, healthy, pain-free living possible. In today's episode, Dr. Ryan and I discuss the mind-slash-brain connection and its role in the creation of chronic pain. And we discuss an actionable plan to improve mindset and start reducing pain symptoms today using the four-pillar mindset system, an exciting and incredibly accessible system to get people on track to a pain-free life, really with zero cost. Welcome back to Pain-Free for Life where we share how to successfully overcome all kinds of chronic and extreme conditions to live happy, productive, pain-free lives forever. And now here's your host, co-founder, and board-certified holistic healthcare practitioner, Dr. Rob Van Bergen. All right, Dr. Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, Dr. Rob, I appreciate you having me. So we're going to talk about mindset today, a topic that plays an essential role in the treatment of chronic pain, chronic disease, and really just like living our best lives, I suppose. So uh, Dr. Ryan, let's start with what role does the mind and brain, because I know they're kind of different things, uh, play in the process of creating chronic pain? You know, this is something that uh, it's so important, especially because when most people feel pain, it's, again, in my experience, and maybe even with you too, is they think it's something physical that happened, which it can be, but it could also be these other things. And how I'll explain this is, is the brain, and you know, it, it works in these loops. And one of the loops is very simple. There's inputs that we have, that we put into or onto our body and our, our mind and brain. And then when these inputs come in, well, now the brain has to interpret what that means, and then it makes the output based on that interpretation. And these inputs could be anything from, you know, physically, you know, physical stresses, mental, I shouldn't even say stress, because it, it could be a good input. It could be a, a non-threatening input. And that's where the interpretation comes in, where the brain has to say, well, is this safe or is this unsafe? Is this a threat to my safety or is it a-okay? Because the brain's number one goal is to survive, is to keep us safe and just essentially to survive. So even if, it, even if these inputs are the at the expense of us feeling pain, even it, the brain might still see it as a threat is unsafe, but it might not be as big of a threat as feeling the pain. But we'll get to that because the pain that we feel is actually the output. And I mean, you know as well as I do, if we have a threat on our body, whether it's a f- something physically, chemically, emotionally, mentally, and so what are some examples of that? So if we have poor sleep, if we're on medications, if we you know, have a a poor mindset or negative outlook on life. If we, you know, physically have had an injury, or if we, uh, um, uh, you, know, come, you know, eat poor foods, or we don't exercise like we should, or move often, these are all stresses. If we are, and this is a big one for me, being in the uh, spinal health field and chiropractic field for twenty some years, is. If we have poor posture, if we're sitting behind our computer or on the phone, you know, in this hunched over position, these are all considered threats and stresses to the brain. And so it goes into the brain. And and to make this analogy even hopefully more understandable, think about your brain as a bucket that's collecting all of these inputs and all of the threats are drops in the bucket. Whereas all of the safe things are 
getting water out of the bucket or things that we do to, to make our body feel safe and, and less threatened gets water out of the bucket. So all these threats and all these physical, chemical, emotional, mental stresses are going in the bucket. And that water level is, is filling up. And if we're not counteracting that by getting the water out, well, now it continues to rise. Remember, the brain's number one goal is survival. So what the brain thinks is if that water level gets to the top, you're going to die. Like it's going to die. And it doesn't want that. So what it does is it has a fail safe. It has, so about two thirds of the way up the bucket or a third, it, just, it depends on the person and the individual. There's a valve. Think about a spout or a spigot coming off the bucket. Right. So now if that threat level, that water level gets up to that point, it lets it out. So some water, some of that, the threat doesn't go away, but how you notice it that's that's the output. That is your brain letting your yourself know what is going on. That's where you get the quote unquote symptom. So pain is the most common one. It's the least tolerated by us as humans because it's like, all right, we've got to do something about it. The the I say funny, and like that's my adjective to describe <laughs> sad and funny or whatever. The funny thing is with how this works is a emotional stress can cause a physical symptom. So if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you're fearful, if you have a poor outlook on life, those are drops in the bucket, but they can come out of that spout as you start to feel pain or even, you know, you could have physically, which I know you and I both know dealing with a lot of people in chronic pain, how that has, it has an effect on them mentally and emotionally. So that can create more anxiety, can create more frustration and confusion. And then it creates this big cycle. Yeah. And where most therapies come in is they deal with the output. I shouldn't say therapies. I should say medications, pills, surgeries. It deals with the output rather than fixing the inputs that we're putting in. And that's essentially how your brain and even mind, but we'll get into how to control the mind and how to deal with the whole mind part of it when we get into the whole system of retraining that to give our body more safe safety, to give our more our body more safe thoughts and how that can um, um, counteract these inputs that we're putting in. And I know, again, we were just talking about this before, yeah. is I'm a recovering pessimist. That's what I call myself, is where I've had to retrain my brain uh, and retrain my mind to see the good. And yes, positive thinking. That's not what mindset is all about. And it's not just a one-time aha experience. It's a trainable, fixable thing that, that we'll get into. Yeah. And of course, it will have that dramatic effect on the physical and everything. Cause as you said, it's this kind of never ending cycle for people in chronic pain It's stress leads to pain, which leads to stress, which leads to pain. And it just keeps going and going. And, and it also has that potential to create even more dis what, different diseases and things that go along with it too. Right. It, well, it, that can be part of that, you know, keep it simple, the bucket analogy, the spout. So the, the threat that you're letting out, you're right. That can develop into chronic issues and chronic um, um, diseases, autoimmune problems, fibromyalgia, like all these headaches, migraines. Every output that comes out of that, of that spigot, it can be a disease in which, again, you and I both know, basically, disease is just a collection of symptoms. It's it's describing what the symptom actually is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which exactly. is again, funny. Yeah. Um, okay. So mindset is this thing we've got to take care of. And as you said, it's something that can be trained. We can train ourselves to take care of this. So what is the four pillar mindset system that you use, that you employ that retrains the mind body connection? So this is getting, we're going right into the, the, the strategies and the practical strategies on how to do this, because I want to give you these you know, that give the listener an action, actionable steps. Absolutely. And this is what I've used. This is what thousands and thousands of people have used. 
uh, in, in it's been used for everybody who's like 13 years old up to 80 years old, uh, elite athletes to, you know, people who are in chronic pain that have helped. This helps lead the way with it. And this is, I want to give credit to where this is from. It's the eliminate your limits mindset system. It's from Brian Grasso and Carrie Campbell. And it is one of the most, I can probably said practical, but ways to, to just retrain the neural connections of the brain. And there's four steps, like obviously you have four pillars mindset. Now I'll list them, and but then I'll go over each of them. So it's learn your language, count your wins, review your direction, and imagine your outcome. And I like starting with learn your language because that's essentially bringing awareness to this narrative, these unconscious, uh, this unconscious dialogue that people have in their minds. And you're not crazy if you talk to yourself. Everybody talks to themselves. Everybody has things going on in their brain, in their mind that's telling them certain things. And that can get in the way of living a pain-free life. So learn your language is essentially journaling and it's deconstructing the current narrative that you actually have. And 99.9% of the time, everybody needs to do this or 99.9% of the people need to do this because unless you are, you never have any problems, your, your health is perfect, your family's perfect, your relationships, your, uh, you know, your money and finances, normally there's some sort of limiting belief. And that's essentially what this is. That's holding you back from having, you know, getting to your goals or, 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 or progressing to the life that you want. So learn your language is essentially bringing awareness to these thoughts, bringing them out of the shadows, bringing them into the light. So then you can deal with them because if you don't, they'll just continually play in the background without you even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So first, how you do this is what I like to do is first thing in the morning when it's quiet, just take five minutes and take inventory of yourself in four different ways. All right. For learn your language. So what are the thoughts that you're thinking or that you, you that you find yourself coming back to during the day? It, you know, in, in the health world, a couple of them are. I'm just getting old. Right. How many times have we heard that? I'm just getting old. Uh, it is what it is. I, I, I can't change it. You know, these types of limiting uh, beliefs. What's another one that I just oh heard today? It's always something, right? It's always something. So what are the thoughts that are any more, you know, negative connotation? It doesn't have to be. I mean, it could be good stuff, but that gets into the review your direction part when we get there in a second. So what are your thoughts? How do you feel emotionally? Are you sad, angry? mad, fearful? Do you worry? Are you stressed? And you're going to write these down. I, I don't know if I mentioned it. I want you to write them down and just do the best you can to not judge yourself for what you're thinking, how you're feeling. The third thing is what are the uh, physical symptoms that you feel? You know, where do you feel the pain? Because in that bucket analogy with the threat bucket, he said, it doesn't matter the, the input, like whether it's a physical or emotional type input that you're putting in there, it can still come out as pain or it can come out as tightness and come out as a, a you know, your heart can be racing, your, your, you know, shortness of breath. So what type of physical symptoms do you have? And then lastly, the fourth part of that is what type of behavior? What, how are you acting? Are you avoiding? Are you procrastinating? Mm. Are you comparing yourself to other people? These are all aspects of, okay, these are the threats that I'm putting inside of my body that, okay, that eventually can be experienced as pain if, if they're not already in that way, it, you know, feeling that in that direction already. You know, that one hits me pretty hard, actually, because just even thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my life. And one thing that happens to me is when I wake up in the morning, my first thought is, what if this goes wrong? You know, where's this going to go wrong? Um, and so my response to that can be if I if I overthink it too much, 
I can get digestive upset. And then I'll procrastinate all of the big things I got to do. So it's it's exactly what you just said, following that line. I'm like that. I was like, well, what sort of negative things do I think of when I get up in the morning? I'm like, if I'm going to have them, that is it. It's like, okay, this is everything's on track to where I want it to be. What if it isn't anymore? What if it derails? My whole life will fall apart. And, you know, and then, yeah, <laughs> it's funny how relatable it is already just from step one. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a great insight right there because how many people listening can identify with that? Right? right. Maybe not exactly, but we have these thoughts. And a lot of times when we wake up in the morning, we yep. can have those. Writing it down makes it more powerful instead of just because when you write it, a lot of times it's not as bad as when you're actually thinking it, me included. It can just have that monkey mind where it just keeps going and going and cycling. Whereas when I write it down, I'm like, oh, it doesn't seem that bad. Yeah. I, I can handle that. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that that's the learn your language part. You might feel like you have nothing in there. You might feel like it just, you, you know, spew out everything on the page. Just keep going with that. Again, morning tends to be the, the best. I don't like doing this one at night before bed because that's what, <laughs> that, might not sleep well. That's what we leave. Yeah, that's what we leave for number two, which is count your wins. And this, you know, gets mistaken as okay. This is the positive thinking part. You know, with positive thinking, it's not necessarily or saying affirmations, and it's not that because affirmations are thinking positive. You can think positive or say affirmations about things that your brain and mind does not believe. So then that just creates more disconnection and cognitive dissonance between what is actually happening and what you want. Count your wins is something different because it's actually finding the evidence in your day of how you have moved towards your the goals that you have. So for example, and I like doing this one more towards the end of the day, starting off, and you can always adapt these as you get better at them. But at the end of the day, you're just going to say, okay, well, first, what is your goal? Let's say it's to get out of pain, right? right. I, I want to get, you know, get rid of these headaches. I want to get rid of this fibromyalgia. How am I going to, and you have this plan in place with Dr. Rob or another healthcare practitioner that, that helps you with your lifestyle and you're incorporating movement and you're incorporating healthy foods and you know, mindset practice, whatever, uh, sleep. So you're going to go back through the day and look at, okay, what did I do today that led me towards being pain-free? Whether it's the movement part of it. Oh, I, you know what? I, I went for a walk out to the, to the mailbox. And it can be just something simple like that that you haven't done. And it, you have to make it simple. If you are in bed a lot, in pain, which I know a lot of people in patients have been, you can't say, I want to walk a mile today. If you're not even, again, going out to the mailbox or going to the end of the block or the end of the driveway. And you can't beat yourself up about not doing that, but you give yourself credit and count the win of, I actually walked to the end of the driveway and I haven't did do that all week. So what is the evidence that you are progressing towards it? And you perseverate on that. You just think about that. You you give yourself praise for that. You know what? I I drank a glass of water today when maybe you don't drink any water. I drank two glasses of water. And if you do that every day, like drink the water, give yourself credit for it every day. Whatever these steps are that you've taken and you actually done because your brain can't argue with argue with you about it. You actually did it. Now, let's say you had a bad day and you ate, you know, a piece of pizza or a, a half of a pizza, right? Or three donuts. At least you didn't eat a whole pizza. At least you didn't eat five donuts like you usually do when you're stressed out. So that's the difference between affirmations and positive thinking versus counting your wins and finding the evidence. Finding the evidence, it actually happened. And let me just go back for a second. So learn your language is deconstructing, right? So the next three counting your wins included is reconstructing the narrative in your brain. So 
you, see, you notice how, okay, one part of, again, the negative part, but then now we're going to build it up with three parts of the positive. We don't want to just stew in the negative. We have to retrain the brain using these next three and counting your wins is the most immediate effect that you can get. Because when you start thinking about it and start thinking, you know, uh, uh, just stewing on the positive and the good that you did, that starts to build and that starts to retrain the neural connections in the brain. Right. Yeah. And that's something we always emphasize here as well as like, take small steps because so many people have these big goals. And if your end goal is just to be pain free and you've been in pain for 20 years and all you're doing is chasing that goal without something along the way, right. To, to achieve that, you're going to feel defeated all the time. Yeah. And so that's, that's definitely a big deal too. And that goes right into review your direction. But I do want to just take a moment and just give an example of how this has helped a a colleague of mine. And she was bedridden. She was essentially suicidal. And where she started was count your wins. And it took her six months. You know, she was in so much pain, the fibromyalgia, uh, trigeminal neuralgia. And she started with count your wins to where her win was just getting out of bed in the morning and, and washing the dishes. Yeah. And now she's worked her way through these four pillars to where she's actually coaches this now and, and shows people how to do it. So, but uh, you know, you mentioned like these little benchmarks or checkpoints along the way where you have to focus on those. And that leads perfectly into review your direction because this is the day it's very similar to count your wins, but this is the daily reflection of your intentions or your, I mean, most people know them as goals, but intentions, it brings you into the moment. And I know with learn your language, we talked about, okay, think about what the goal is or the intention is. And then what is your thoughts and feelings and behaviors and and physical symptoms of that? But as you get going now, review your direction is more in that we slant it in the positive direction of it. So we reflect on these intentions and goals, like to be pain-free, to, you know, to be able to run a marathon, to, uh, you know, walk my kids down the aisle or dance with my kids at the wedding, at the wedding, whatever it is, but we're informing our brain. Okay. We're thinking about that goal. And eventually you can hopefully get rid of the learn your language and just do your review your direction. But a good kind of pattern is if you do learn your language and then do a review your direction right after that, if you can, or again, towards the end of the day, just depends on how you want to start off with that. You just, you pick one of the goals. Like you might have three different goals, just pick one. And you ask yourself and you reflect on it, spend two to five minutes reflecting on it. And questions are always helpful, helpful to get you down the path is just thinking about, okay, what is that going to feel like when I achieve it, when I get there, when I, you know, like you said, you know, why did you set the goal in the first place? That's another good one because it gets you back to why it's important to you measuring. Okay. Why, why am I doing this? You know, where were you when you set the goal? What made you want to do this? Uh, How far, this is a great one. I love this one is my favorite. I think because we, we see the memes, I think of Michael Phelps was, was swimming in the Olympics or, or Usain Bolt. I think that's another one where it's showing him looking straight ahead and not looking to the side, right? Looking to see how far he's had of them. Well, this is different. We actually want to see how far we've come. We want to compare ourselves now versus where we were. So how far have you actually come? Looking back, saying, you know what? Before I, again, go back to the water example. I, I couldn't drink any water, but now I'm drinking four glasses a day. And you might have that little flicker because we're it's still a work in progress. Oh, but I need to get to eight. I need to get to this point. But we want to look at the gain. That's another great book, another great uh, uh, method, uh, The Gap in the Gain. Everybody look that one up because that 
th this is teaching you to be in the gain rather than the gap of how far you still need to go. This is why it's good at the beginning of the day too, is to set your direction for the day as well, is what's most important today. Right. And, and, and right, this is all writing down. Mind you, the count your wins is writing it down because you see it in triplicate when you write it down or you even speak it out loud. Because when you write it or speak it, one, you think it. So that's, you know, repetition one. Two, you, you know, speak it or write it. And then three, you see it or hear it. So you get that repetition, you know, in triplicate form rather than just it's rolling around in your head. Right. I'm not saying don't think about your wins, but I'm saying set time away to count your wins and review your direction. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And this one's huge too, because, you know, there are many people we see that are aiming to get out of chronic pain. That is their end goal. And they will totally lose track of where they were before. And then they can't see that how far they've actually come in the first place, right? And that is that is a huge problem. And we off, we've had to say to people before, okay, well, you don't think this has made any difference. Stop the therapy and give it a few days and let's see what happens. And it's like, whoa, I was sleeping better or my pain was lower. And then it just gives you that positive reinforcement as well of knowing that you are actually making progress instead of thinking that you're just getting nowhere, right? So important. That's uh, beautiful. I love that share. That, that's excellent because you're right. It's because we've been, I don't want to say we've been trained, but sometimes we're told we just got to keep looking forward, keep looking forward. But it's important to see how far we've come. I totally agree. So so this leads into the last part of the four pillars, which is imagine your outcome. And I guess you could qualify this as, okay, this is more positive thinking because it hasn't happened yet. But this is like the 30,000 foot view of what you want with your life. And this is not just thinking about it, but spending time with it and trying to create emotion around that. So one method that you could do is, so think about where you want to be. And, and what that means. And not just like if you're pain-free, but what that means for your life. What haven't you been able to do that now you can do? Now that you're 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 in that that mode of okay, I can well for me, I'm playing basketball. All right, I can play basketball till I'm 60, 70 years old, whatever you know, I'm doing that physically. So you're gonna make it like basically a 10 second to one minute movie clip, like a movie trailer. And you're just seeing yourself do these things, do right. what's important to you, do uh, living your life. And I know it seems far off, especially if you're in a, a really bad state right now. But the more that you do that on a regular basis, especially in the beginning, you kind of need to set aside a little bit of time around it. So for example, so I, you know, I'm a chiropractor. I do co corrective uh, spinal health care. So I lay, it, so the spine should have this certain shape to it. I have to practice what I preach. I want to make sure my spine is healthy so my nervous system is healthy. So while I'm laying on my, these spinal remolding blocks, that's a good time where I do it. Right. Where just this movie. You can also do it, do it during the day. There's so many, oh man. There's just so many countless opportunities to do this during the day rather than focus focusing on like that inner negative dialogue. And I love it because my coach, Carrie Campbell, the one who created this, this system, I love it. She's like, think about this. How often are these horrible thoughts going through your mind? So don't say you can't think because you're thinking regardless. So how about we replace that thought with the thought of imagining your outcome that you actually want. So while you're washing dishes, while you're driving, while you are, you know, uh, 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 you know, doing the laundry, while you're walking, while you're on your spinal remolding blocks, why not do it then? You have the opportunity to do it. You're thinking already, so let's just replace it with imagine your outcome. Right. So those are the essentially the four pillars. Uh, and hopefully you got enough out of this to where you can start. What if you're going to start with one? Start with count your wins, because it just it automatically it, it immediately puts 
the thought in your head of, okay, I accomplished something and gets you on that right path. Right. Excellent. Yeah. And then, you know, being able to say in the end, from my perspective of what I say, you know, my issue is the what if this goes wrong, being able to say, take that what if this goes wrong and say, instead, it won't. And just get on with it. it. That's kind of the way I have to shift myself. And it's not to say that that's always easy, right? Sometimes it's very hard to do that, but you've at least got to try. And as you said, counting your wins, that one's always been huge for clients. It's something that I do, writing them down. I get my wife to do it, my kids to do it, because especially as a person, you, you said you're a recovering pessimist. And for me, I kind of, you know, I always think that, I grew up pessimistic. My family's a pessimistic outlook, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're thinking negatively. But being able to count the small wins just by itself can shift you to that positive thinking. Some of my my wife used to say, you know, as you said, it can be as simple as I got out of bed this morning. I got to have a cup of tea that I really wanted, right? Little things, the joys in life, searching for those and being able to embrace all of that into mindset. I think this has just been an excellent explanation that goes beyond just that positive thinking piece that kind of gets a bad rap. Because while it is true, while we do want to be positively thinking, I think it puts too much emphasis or implication on the idea that it's all in our head. And that's not necessarily true, right? The pain is real. It really is there. We just, we've got to, address the fact that the mind is so powerful it can and help this gives, yeah and this gives how to do it because yes okay i remember my mom always telling me just think positive okay great but that is the action but the action is determined by the unconscious narrative that we have i mean why do people get you know into toxic relationship after toxic relationship so it's because there's some sort of thing leading them that way from you know past experiences that we've had or influences that we had and and you know I I love what you said about that that initial thought right of what's going to go wrong essentially right and let me give you a little tip with that for everybody where sometimes it's hard to go from okay what's going to go wrong to this is going to go great right that that gap can be too much so instead of trying to get from there to there just being aware of that thought, if it's that or if like, okay, it is what it is, or it, this is always going to be here. I'm never going to get rid of this. Just in the moment, just identify, I call it identify and interrupt or and kill it. So what that means is identify what that limiting belief and just kill it with, you interrupt it because we want to interrupt so we don't have to intervene. So you interrupt it with just okay, stop. Like that used to be my kill switch, I call it. All right, stop. Another one was, do I want to let this ruin my day? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like any not like ruining my day because that's the thought that gets placed in there. But like, is this going to ruin my day? No, I don't. It's not going to. It's just what is a like a kill switch you can have to say, okay, stop it. And even if you have to stop that thought before moving into like, the the positive part of it, just keep doing that. You might have to do it 50 times in 10 minutes. That's okay because you're training your, your brain. Okay, stop. Just stop. Just stop. That, yeah. that, again, I can say that because that was my kill switch. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I have to say to my kids sometimes when she's freaking out. It's like, stop. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah. Think about it. It's okay. You're okay. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, no, great advice. Um, and something I think People need to hear about mindset. And it's something we really do need to take seriously. Um, We have kind of something, it's something we teach um, in our reset program, but we don't actually even teach it till the end, despite the fact that we know it's one of the key pieces because we don't want people to be like, mindset, no way, I'm not interested in this. Um, But when we get 60, 70% of the way better and we stall, we're looking at mindset for sure. Yeah. yeah. Is oh, you're, you're exactly right because it's such a sometimes a woo woo esoteric type thing that people like. How can that help me physically? Yeah. Just, let's go. Just everybody go back to the whole threat bucket. 
You know, our body's a reservoir for all these emotions and thoughts. And very often it's much easier dealing with physical pain than the emotional pain yeah. that is underlying the, the, the physical symptoms that we're feeling. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Ryan. It was a pleasure. Uh, I appreciate you, Dr. Rob, and keep up the great work. You too. To our audience, make sure you connect with our guest. I'm going to include all of his information in the show notes at painfreeforlife.com forward slash podcast. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rob Van Bergen, and you're listening to Pain Free for Life. Thanks for listening to Pain Free for Life. Be sure to follow us, share the show with family and friends, and leave us a review on iTunes. Every time you share the show, you are helping someone take their life back from pain. Visit painfreeforlife.com for more resources, including our free guides to microcurrent, the Hache protocol and inflammation, as well as our blog and online community full of people just like you, successfully overcoming all kinds of chronic and extreme conditions to live happy, productive, pain-free lives forever. And stay tuned for the next episode of Pain-Free for Life.